Hey guys, and welcome back to Steamworks. So when we talk about the construction of a, of a boiler, it's important to mention one of its most critical components, and that's refractory. And today on Steamworks, we're gonna do just that and take a look at boilers refractory. So recently we were talking about the construction of boilers through ASME welding procedures. The fabrication of boilers and their steel components rely heavily on extreme temperatures as does the process of steam production. That being said, it is then extremely important to protect the steel of the boilers from these high temperatures. The fire side of a boiler can see temperatures in excess of 2000 degrees or more in the initial pass. And these metal surfaces are subject to premature failure and shock in the event that they are not properly shielded. Generally speaking, there are two things that provide this shielding or protection. Obviously, the water on the water side is not only critical for making steam or hot water, it's however at the same time protecting the vessel against thermal shock. The design of the boiler will of course limit water from totally being able to protect all surfaces and so refractory comes into play here providing both structural retention and insulation for these units. In regards to insulation properties, a steam boiler's function is essentially to rapidly heat water. So retaining those valuable BTUs during and between the burner cycles is of course of utmost importance. The relation to the boiler's efficiency as a whole and its refractory cannot be emphasized enough. It could be easily compared to the insulation of a house. The better insulated a home is, the less the air handler or heat pump will have to work to retain a set temperature. Poor insulation means more cycles and premature wear and tear on the heating and cooling equipment. Likewise, poor refractory and insulation on a boiler will decrease the boiler's ability to retain the heat and transfer it into the water for steam production. Typically speaking, boilers will have two types of refractories used, castables and fire bricks. Both are used in conjunction with one another to provide the sufficient coverage on the fire side components. Fire bricks come in various dimensions and materials but are generally a ceramic or clay based brick in a rectangular or even triangular shapes that are set into specific areas of the boiler like the shelf area of the rear door. Castables as well are available in many different materials to meet various furnace applications. As their name implies they are a product that is mixed much like a bag of concrete formed and then cured these castable products allow for much more versatility in the insulation of tight corners and radiuses within the boilers, doors, or other fireside areas. Castable refractories can also be used in minor repairs during annual open and closes of a boiler. Both fire bricks and castables have very high temperature ratings. However, proper procedures are critical during the installation of refractories. Because of the thickness of the refractory in most areas applied, the curing of castables is of utmost importance to ensure that the moisture is not trapped inside and ruin the refractory upon refiring of the vessel. So the rear door of a boiler, also referred to as the target wall, is an area of the fire tube boiler that will see some of the most extreme temperatures and is of course an area that will often show the first signs of insufficient or failing refractory. Hot spots, as they are often called, will become evident when the boiler's ex external paint is being compromised the areas may begin taking on a discolored look or the paint could begin bubbling up or flaking off and is usually a good indicator that the refractory needs some immediate attention. If not addressed in a timely fashion, hot spots can turn into permanent damage that requires replacement of the affected parts. So refractory should always be visually inspected when the boiler is opened up and cracks or voids should be repaired prior to closing the boiler up. Cracks less than an eighth of an inch are common and they will reseal themselves upon the vessel being refired. Refractory surfaces should get what's called a wash coat of a high temp mortar mixed into a cream like consistency and spread evenly over all surfaces. And as mentioned, castable mortars can repair larger areas where chunks may be missing. The intervals and inspections will vary based on the load that the system regularly undergoes and should be determined in-house, but typically twice a year is common practice for inspecting these, the refractory in these boilers. When larger areas are repaired, it is important to carefully inspect the area for and remove any loose fragments of refractory prior to applying the repair mortar. Refractory showing major signs of failure should certainly be further evaluated and are repaired by experienced boiler professionals prior to closing the boiler and refiring to prevent 
even further and possibly irreversible damage. Sometimes this refractory repair is beyond the scope of simply patching or wash coating and a complete door refractory replacement or re-pouring becomes necessary. Obviously this can impinge production within a plant and often these facilities will choose to replace the door as a whole with the change out door as it's called. These change out doors will drastically re reduce the amount of time typically associated with an infield refractory replacement on a door. Here at Power Mechanical we specialize in quick recovery on these rear door replacements and keep a large inventory of various manufacturers rear doors in stock and in many cases ready to ship. Alright guys there you have it I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did be sure and hit that thumbs up button and also make sure and subscribe to our channel. Now I want to mention Steam School coming up September 1st and 2nd. We're filling up fast, but we got a couple more seats left. So if you want to get in on it, give me a call at this number right here. Other than that, we'll see you next week for another Steamworks.